Recently, Elon Musk unveiled his plans for a new type of spacecraft that would use nuclear power to get to Mars. We all know that space travel is expensive and current technology has many limitations. But what if there was a way to make it more affordable and practical? That's where Musk's idea comes in. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the future of space travel and how Elon Musk's new nuclear spaceship will revolutionize the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in and get ready for takeoff. Space travel has come a long way since the early days of NASA, but there are still many limitations to what we can do. For example, current rockets are only capable of reaching low Earth orbit. This means that we're limited to the International Space Station and other near-Earth satellites. Beyond that, things get very expensive very quickly. We all know that there is life, whether in the universe or on another planet distant from Earth. Thus, using nuclear energy and a consistent power supply of electricity can speed up, improve and reduce the cost of interplanetary travel. NASA-supported SpaceX nuclear rocket conceptually could make travel to Mars affordable for the masses, which means that, in the future, space travel might not be just for the wealthy. So what's up with this insanely nuclear starship? In 2020, the White House gave NASA a 10-year deadline to deliver a 10-kilowatt nuclear power system to the surface of the Moon. The project is now a top priority of the agency's Space Technology Mission Directorate. And in July 2021, congressional appropriators earmarked $110 million for NASA to advance development of a new nuclear rocket suitable for sending cargo and crew on interplanetary voyages. NASA had not even asked for the money. The obvious reason for this increased sense of urgency is the Space Agency's stated goal of establishing a moon base by the end of the decade, which is difficult, if not impossible, to do without nuclear power, let alone landing boots on Mars. Surprisingly, developing a nuclear reactor for use in spaceflight requires no significant technological improvements. The US has already done so once, with the Air Force's development and launch of a working prototype in 1965. It will instead be a matter of navigating the complex web of regulations that surround all things nuclear and ensuring that NASA does not limit itself to just the lunar surface or any other lone deep space destination with nuclear power. In an ideal world, the power of the atom could be used not only to send people to the Moon and Mars, but also to send robots all over the solar system to explore. Now, let's get more into technical details in order to understand how this technology could work. Firstly, we need to understand how rocket propulsion works. A typical chemical rocket carries its oxidizer, which is usually liquid oxygen, in a tank separate from the fuel, typically kerosene. As the fuel burns, it generates hot gases that are funneled through a nozzle to create thrust. The thrust which underlies rocket propulsion can be understood by imagining releasing the nozzle from an air-filled balloon. As the air escapes, the balloon hull is propelled the other way. This force is the thrust. Rocket engines produce thrust by forcing gas from the engine's nozzle by igniting a mixture of fuel and oxidizer. In this way, the rocket is propelled in the opposite direction. But there are other alternatives besides chemical rocket engines. In comparison, nuclear thermal propulsion systems are twice as powerful and effective as chemical rocket systems. The NTP systems generate heat from nuclear energy to turn liquid propellant into gas in order to create thrust by using nuclear energy. NTP systems can produce twice the thrust with the same amount of propellant, making them twice as efficient and powerful as chemical rocket engines. By cutting the time it takes a rocket to reach Mars by 25%, astronauts will be less likely to experience cosmic radiation, microgravity and boredom. Mars missions would also be more adaptable with NTP engines. Due to the heavy fuel requirements, the only time a crewed chemical rocket mission to Mars can be launched 
is when the orbits of Earth and Mars are exactly matched, which happens only once every 26 months. Due to the effectiveness of an NTP system, it would only take a volume of uranium barely larger than a marble to get to Mars, which is a lot less fuel than you'd need for a chemical rocket. The powerful engine would make it possible to travel even when Earth and Mars weren't in their best positions, which is good news. If you didn't have to wait two years for fuel or rescue, nuclear propulsion would increase the number of crewed travel opportunities and reduce the number of flights needed to bring the fuel for such a trip into Earth's orbit. These fuel requirements are taken into account. The 120 meters tall Starship will fundamentally change the way space scientists perform their work, as well as enable human exploration, establish bases on Mars, and create multi-planetary species and preserve civilization from extinction. They might be able to transport bigger and heavier sensors more frequently and at much lower costs if SpaceX's predictions of cargo launch costs are confirmed. Rather than sending out rovers individually, it may be easier to send out fleets of satellites in low Earth orbit, and telescopes may improve in astronomy, planetary science and Earth observation, all of which may lead to bold advances. The 70-metre taller Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX has already changed the face of the aerospace industry. The landing of the first stage is guided by retro rockets and steerable fins. SpaceX invented reusability with that rocket once it re-entered the atmosphere. It is expected that the corporation will launch more than 50 Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets this year, which works out to approximately one launch per week. At an International Astronautical Congress in Mexico in 2016, Elon Musk drew designs for a rocket to inhabit Mars. The rocket would later be known as the BFR, Big Falcon Rocket, in family-friendly terms. The idea was developed into Starship, but the emphasis on cost and reusability persisted, making launches as uninteresting and commonplace. The rocket's body is made of stainless steel, which is more expensive and easier to produce than the aluminium alloys used in most rockets, but heavier methane is used in place of conventional kerosene-based rocket fuels by the 33 Raptor engines squeezed into the back of the Super Heavy not only because it's less expensive, but also because it can be produced on Mars by mixing carbon dioxide and water. The launcher is designed to return to the pad after a six-minute flight, where it can be refueled and readied for another launch within an hour. According to the company, every Starship should have enough fuel for three daily launches. As an example, a tanker model of the vehicle might refuel a fully loaded Starship in orbit, allowing it to transport 100 tonnes of cargo to the Moon or Mars. From the outside, this setup appears to be a chemical propulsion system, with the process looking quite similar to the flames coming out of a rocket engine. The primary issue with nuclear thermal propulsion is the high-performance reactor it requires, which can reach temperatures of up to 2,500 degrees Celsius during operation, which is extremely dangerous for astronauts and material engineers. In addition, the intense focus method has the benefit that the propulsion system only needs to be run for a few hours, so that you can complete all of your work quickly, and the spaceship is then able to fly to Mars or back to Earth at top speed. In the 21st century, fusion-powered spacecraft may also be used to take people to Mars. So, we can say that space travel in the future will be very different and exciting, with new technologies making it possible to explore our solar system and beyond in ways we never thought possible. What are your thoughts on the future of space travel? Do you think we will see even more amazing advances in the years to come? Let us know in the comments.